New Moon, December 23rd, 2022. Reevaluate your priorities, actions, goals, and desires. This new moon is a good time to start a new health routine and look deeper into your well being. Make long term plans and take baby steps towards your goals. Go slow. The universe will bring healing energy by showing you the truth about a situation. Go into a trance of love and oneness. We come from energy and turn back into energy. We all matter for a very short time. Make sure that when you matter, you really matter. As an autistic, I can readily see environmental phenomena of sun particles interacting with moisture in the air and rising up from the ground. I thought of these things I could see as sun sparkles and word tales. Hypersensitivities and other phenomena in autism. Sometimes sensory hypersensitivities are misinterpreted as extrasensory perception, ESP. As normal, people not only fail to see, hear, smell or feel what some autistic individuals can, but also find it hard to imagine that these experiences are possible because normal people are blind, deaf and dumb to the stimuli which are everyday experiences for some autistic individuals. However, there is nothing extrasensory about their ability to hypersense, as some autistic people's senses are so acute that they may see, hear, feel or smell the stimuli that are undetectable by the majority. Their senses are finely tuned to the environment. For example, some react to tiny changes in weather patterns and atmosphere pressure. Others can see energy and its movement around them. Many are sensitive to vibration or sensitive to small differences in color, have enhanced auditory discrimination as if their brains are tuned to higher frequencies. Some autistic children can hear some frequencies that only animals can hear. By the way, we won't assume that animals have ESP, do we? Why don't we appreciate their ability, caused by their heightened senses, to perceive and experience color, sound, texture, smell and taste to a higher degree than people around them? The answer is simple. How can we appreciate something if we have never experienced it? It's easier to assume it doesn't exist. Resonance merging and losing oneself in sensory stimuli. Fascination with certain stimuli may culminate with losing oneself. In these stimuli, to the extent that one can become resonant with them. These terms were introduced by Donna Williams to define a state when one loses oneself in, becomes resonant with something else. The person can merge with, lose oneself in, to different sensory stimuli as if the person became a part of the stimulus itself. These are very real experiences. Another interesting feature of the state of resonance is when one can sense the surface texture and density of material without looking at it with physical eyes or touching it with physical hands or tasting it with physical tongue or tapping it to hear how it sounds. That is sensing it with non-physical senses, the so-called shadow senses. 
Fascination. The ability to hypersense can lead to a hypnotic level of fascination with sensory stimuli that is quite common in autism. A typical picture of an autistic child is when he or she is staring transfixed at something, watching the reflection of light, color or visual patterns, or absorbed with vibration of sounds, or constantly touching objects of certain texture. Donna Williams names it as the beautiful side of autism, the sanctuary of the prison. To me, that is the inner heart space. Yes. And why? Because you are dissociating from the outer world. You let go. There is no brain chatter. It's a beautiful state of inner peace and just observation and calm. It is indeed a sanctuary. You just go within. Autistic individuals can be fascinated with different sensory stimuli, such as the smell of melting candles, the feel of velvet or marble. I have that with green moss. It's just so beautiful to look at and to touch. Since I was a child, I'm really so attracted to that and feel so connected. Just looking at it, I can feel the softness of it in my body. Or sheepskin. They are so cute. Can directly reduce anxiety because it's so comforting. The look of clouds gliding high, the salty taste of sweat. The sources of fascinations are very individual. For example, to some people certain visual patterns are appealing. Others may find pattern shape and vibration of noise as it bounces off the walls fascinating. In this sense, autistic perception can be seen as superior to that of people whose senses function normally. Researchers are catching up with these phenomena. For example, Rosenblum and colleagues have conducted experiments showing that we can hear the silent environment because surroundings not only produce sounds we are not consciously aware of, but they also structure them and give them shape, which people can see without seeing. It is necessary to be open-minded and willing to learn from autism about different ways to experience the world around us. I attempt to weave together science, neurology, psychology, anthropology, linguistics and philosophy and real-life experiences of people with autism in order to provide a greater understanding of how sensory differences can bring people with autism to the edges and beyond of normal perception. We can look at these phenomena from an anthropological perspective, e.g. to consider so-called telepathy as a form of nonverbal communication. For instance, we do not see anything mystical or supernatural in animals' telepathy when animals use the sense of smell to read messages about the health of their owners or pick up subtle cues to know when they are to be taken to the vets. There's nothing psychic about their ability. They have been doing it all their lives. And last but not least, the language we speak limits and distorts our perceived worlds even further. 
The way we talk about autism and life in general changes the way we think about it. Linguistic filter, taboos and conventions hold us back in our attempts to learn about autism and change our attitudes to differences. Only opening our minds to diversity and acknowledging the filters that prevent us to see will bring better understanding, not only people with ASD, but ourselves, our real selves. It's necessary to be open-minded and willing to learn from autism about different ways to experience the world around us. We have to challenge common perceptions of what it means to be normal and abnormal and look at how the nature of the senses inform an individual's view of the world and how language both reflects and constructs that view, how the senses and language interact differently in the autistic individual and what it means to be human. If you want to learn more about it, read this book. It is truly great. It moves even beyond simple cognitive processing into the world of linguistics, concept development and beliefs. For any professional who works with autistic individuals and researchers in the field of autism, this is a must-read book. It explains a perspective that thus far is pretty much totally ignored.